So what have I been doing to really tone up over quarantine? What changes have I made to my diet, my routine, while still maintaining a good relationship with food? Basically, I'm gonna let you know. So last year, I was going to Core Power Yoga Sculpt almost every other day. And don't get me wrong, I love Core Power. If COVID hadn't hit, I'd probably still be going to Core Power. But I think the way I train now is, or at least has been, a lot more efficient for muscle growth. I feel so much stronger in the span of four, five, six months than I have in the last year or two. To give you an idea, on the left is me in February, barely able to do two push-ups, horrible form, and then the right is now. And I think part of that comes down to, you know, once you've built that initial muscle, it's a lot easier to uh, progress. So if you're starting out and you're new to working out, you've never done weights, like do not worry. I was literally in your boat like last year. And I'm still learning. So, um, you know, there's never a wrong time to start weight training or um, trying something new. Tip number one, make sure you give yourself breaks. I have been giving myself more rest. I used to go work out almost every day. And, you know, it was a great to push myself in that way, but I didn't give my body the time to recover. So the biggest thing that honestly terrifies most people and has terrified me too in the past is you need to give your body a break. Also, on top of that, with breaks, not just rest days, but also between each exercise, what I've noticed for myself is um, I give myself more rest between each set and it allows me to push myself harder. Number two, I've been trying to do more progressive overload. Progressive overload is when you continuously work that muscle until you can no longer physically continue. So for example, I've been trying to learn how to do a pull up and I used to never even be able to hold on for that long, but I'm at this point where I can be at the middle and pull myself up. So what I mean by progressive overload is, okay, let's say I managed to be at the middle and pull myself up. Now I'm trying to keep holding on. When I feel like I can't, can't go, I actually lower and I try to hold, you know? So with any exercise, let's say you're doing a squat, you do 10 squats, you're about to collapse, your thighs are hurting, hold it, hold it as long as you can. And then when you're seriously about to collapse, get out of it. <laughs> so yes, progressive overload. I feel like I can't English. I just sometimes, I talk too fast, faster than my brain, so. Another way to practice progressive overload is to increase the weight after each set or try doing more sets. Thirdly, and I think this has been the biggest change for me personally, is now I do high intensity interval training. So what HIT is, is you're basically doing intervals of exercises, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. So when you're 30 seconds off, you're completely at rest, catching your breath. When you're 30 seconds on, you're going as hard as you can. HIT is actually one of the best ways to lose fat and it's been proven by multiple studies and it was kind of why I was getting interested in it too because it's one of the best cardios out there for helping you maintain your muscle mass while um, allowing you to burn your fat storage when you're in a rested state. Number four, come up with a schedule. So this can be a casual schedule. Personally for myself, I have one that's one thing that has really helped me is setting time for myself throughout the week. Monday, I'm gonna try to do weight training. Tuesday, do a little lighter yoga, abs. Wednesday, 
I'm gonna do hit and some weight training. You know, like mixing it up so it stays exciting. Number five, increase your total daily expenditure. So I've explained TDE in some of my other videos, but brief overview, um, your TDE is basically your body's total daily energy expenditure. You know, there is no truly, you cannot truly specifically calculate the calories you are burning unless you know, you're hooked up to a heart rate monitor, but it's a good way to kind of estimate. Um, and at least for me, it really helped teach me that my body needs a lot more food than I thought it did. When I first started getting leaner or getting stronger, trying to lose fat, I thought I had to eat like 13, 13, well, yeah, 1300 calories a day, which is nothing. That's seriously nothing. So now, you know, I don't count, but I could estimate I eat between 2000 to even 2500, like depending on my activity and, you know, what I've done that day. Some days it's less, some days it's more, but that's just life. But one way you can um, increase the your total daily expenditure, the amount of calories your body is burning in a day, is to increase your non-exercise thermal, is that right? Non-exercise activity? Non-exercise thermal activity? Anyways, <laughs> that can be anything from, um, you know, doing chores, walking around. I actually think walking might count as exercise, but you know, going on chores, dancing, learning da TikTok dances, um, baking, just kind of washing, dishes <laughs> um, basically just doing anything that does not take up a lot of physical or mental space it's just more of like a habit so i guess my last tip to you kind of on top of the last one is eat to fuel your body it helps to see food as an ally in the sense that it can nourish your body help strengthen your muscles but at the same time it can help strengthen your mind days you're gonna want girls nights where you just bake cookies and lie in pajamas maybe drink some wine you know that's totally normal and fine if it's good for your mental health do it like I I used to like hate myself for enjoying dessert and it's like literally you should just enjoy life I can't believe <laughs> it's so upsetting and I am sure I come across annoying on all my social media platforms for how into this I am, but it's like I had a revelation that all these expectations we women have for ourselves are fake, like totally false. Because even the people that look like that, even people that are super skinny or super fit, they have fat, they have cellulite, they have bloating, like, it's all natural and normal. And the fact that, you know, media makes you feel like it's not, they're just trying to sell something to you. Just, just interesting. So actually, if I could give a little story time, um, I remember when I was modeling in Paris, me and my roommates, uh, we were all with the same agency and we were sat on a casting. I can't remember what company, it was like L'Oreal or one of those skincare companies. Anyways, I remember going to it and thinking, what if I get this job? Like, that would be kind of, like, it would be cool, but also, like, that's kind of crazy. I didn't get the job. I think my roommate did. But she was, like, 18. And here are companies advertising, you know, a skincare product. Like, oh, no more wrinkles. Oh, have clear skin. But then the model is, like, 18 years old with a ton of makeup on, photoshopped, like, oh my god. <laughs> I feel like it's talked about, and we all know this in the back of our heads, but only until I think you have that revelation for yourself are you kind of stuck in that world. So, just saying, like, it's all total BS. <laughs> I hope that helps. Um, I just want to say the most amazing part of my entire experience has been that I can look at myself in the mirror on good days, on bad days, and know 100% that I love my body. Like, it is such a nice feeling 
to wake up in the morning, you know, and to look at yourself in the mirror and love what you are seeing and to know that you haven't restricted at all. You haven't stopped yourself from having a cookie. You haven't stopped yourself from going out to eat with friends. Like it is seriously the best feeling and it beats being a certain way. It beats, you know, having a certain waist size. So that's my honestly the best part of everything.